The Thinking Atheist presents Noah's Ark, a story of God, giraffes, and genocide. This is the scriptural account of the Great Flood, a worldwide event of catastrophic proportions known specifically for leaving behind absolutely no geological evidence. This story is also known by its overseas title, Drowning Your Children When They Don't Behave, now available in fine bookstores everywhere. Our story begins in the book of Genesis, where God noticed that every single person on the face of the earth had somehow become evil. Yes, everybody, even babies, virgins, the deaf and blind, Republicans, all evil. <laughs> God ignored the fact that he was the one who started this fiasco. And he decided that the whole thing was just a huge mess. And perhaps it was time to get rid of the whole thing and start over. The good news? There was one man who was righteous and blameless. So Noah and his family were told to build the world's largest life raft, known from that day forward as the Ark. God has a thing for arks. In fact, another biblical account involving mass death and destruction involved the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, but uh, we haven't time for that gruesome little story, so let's push on. God told Noah to build an ark out of cypress trees and pitch. 450 feet long, Quite an undertaking for a guy who was 600 years old. Uh, fortunately, his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, uh, were conceived when Noah was 500 years old. Uh, so Noah was obviously vigorous enough for, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, physical activity, if you know what I mean. Uh, then, God commanded Noah to gather up two of every living thing and place them inside the ark. Well, for some reason, God changed that number to seven the following chapter. Uh, however, if uh, you've actually read the Bible, you know that God's not much for consistency. So uh, we'll stick with two and act like uh, <clears throat> we weren't listening. So Noah went about personally gathering up tens of thousands of animal species. Of course, it's unclear how a 600-year-old man in the Middle East, traveling on foot, was able to walk thousands of miles to secure and transport animals from other continents, safely across oceans, rainforests, deserts, and Arctic permafrost to his floating zoo. Siberian wolves, penguins, baboons, crocodiles, anacondas, South American tree frogs, beavers, polar bears, reindeer, etc. And even if these non-desert dwelling creatures survived, how would they all fit inside the ark? Well, some experts estimate the number of animal species to have been in the millions. But even if you believe the biblical argument of a few thousand kinds of animals, wow, that's one bloated boat. Now, what about the specialized diets each animal species would require? Bamboo shoots for the giant pandas, fresh meat for the carnivores, plant life for the herbivores. Now, how did they keep the animals' muscles from withering away after months in a confined space with no exercise? What about the predator and prey animals being housed in the same space? Where was the food stored? And how was it kept from spoiling? Who cleaned out the tons of manure every day? How was the waste disposed of in a stadium-sized boat with only one window? Ah, but you make a fatal mistake. You've just been caught in the act of using logic. Well, it's perfectly understandable, but please, <clears throat> don't let it happen again. And then, God made it rain for 40 days and 40 nights, which means the floodwaters were fresh waters, which would have mixed with the salt waters, creating a mixture deadly to all marine life. So in that case, since there probably weren't any sharks, tuna, and puffer fish inside the ark, God apparently gave the fish the ability to hold their breath for half a year. Oh, and there are some who speculate that the earth vomited up the floodwaters from miles below the earth's crust. Of course, the earth is boiling hot down there, so those floodwaters would have turned the earth into a large creme brulee. Surviving marine life, zero. Well, one thing's for sure. 
Everything and everyone on the earth was horribly and violently drowned, and mankind was destroyed, allowing God to hit Control, Alt, Delete, and do a fresh reboot. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, where it would never be discovered. And Noah sent a dove to find land, which seems odd if he and God were still talking to each other. I mean, after all, God had a much better view. Well, ultimately, Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives stepped out of the ark, took long showers, and practiced incest to repopulate the earth. And that's the story of Noah's Ark. God, giraffes, and genocide. A tale of incompetence, evil, mass murder, animal feces, and inbreeding. A great story for the kids. And uh, <clears throat> better than late night cable TV.